Okay, good morning. Hope everyone's doing great this Monday morning. Monday morning. Uh, Tom Androla here from Office of the President. Welcome to our November UC IT Town Hall. We've uh, got a, right, a great lineup for you today that I'll cover in a minute, but you know, just a couple of things. Last time we uh, broadcast out to you was June, and I was just going back over the weekend and preparing and just couldn't believe how much cool stuff had been happening since June. I just want to talk about a, a couple of things. Richard, go ahead and bring up uh, the slides. So, you know, just since June, three, four months ago, we had, mm -hmm. oh, I uh, yeah, of course, uh, okay. so one more. Okay, so I think we've talked to people about True North and we continue to build our community. I'm gonna show you some statistics about our community. We continue to have this amazing use of Slack. Uh, we're close to 5,300 people in our community. Again, we count our community totals at about 7,500 in total across all 10 campuses and six health systems. Uh, more than 5,000 of them are now using Slack in one capacity or another. Uh, thank you for all those who continue to sign up with the blog. Uh, we've had an aggressive uh, subscribership um, you know, campaign going on and we'll continue to push that. Again, the blog is a great way to get your stories out there for what cool things that you're doing to support the mission of this university. And so you can just see that you know, while we continue to make a lot of progress, we still have a lot of opportunity in front of us. Uh, for those of you who may have gone to UCCSC this summer up at Davis, an amazing event, more than 650 people, um, made it to Davis this summer. We had great weather, so no uh, 9, 9,802 degree temperature. We actually had, it was a mild summer, three, four days, and just an amazing number of um, sessions, some great content. Uh, for example, this happened to be uh, just a snapshot from uh, one of the plenary events, one of the keynote speakers. And you can see you know, how full the crowd is. We were in a, 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 an amazing performing arts center up there. Uh, David did a wonderful job hosting us. And then uh, maybe you uh, got to see the uh, uh, women in leadership uh, in technology leadership panel that we had up there. So a lot of great sessions, uh, great participation. Thank you to Davis and all their uh, wonderful work in hosting our community up there this summer. Talking about our community and coming together, uh, some of you have been involved with something called the Pacific Research Platform. This is really uh, a, an effort that all 10 of our campuses have participated in, literally hundreds of network engineers from across the system. And it's really about keeping the University of California on the forefront of research by giving them the enabling technology to deal with data. Uh, you know, with investment from the National Science Foundation and a lot of you know, hard work and elbow grease from our people. We now are supporting our researchers and have, you can see there that this particular example of, we've taken a, a, a data load, data transfer that used to take 20 days for our researchers to download climate data, and we now have it down to 20 minutes. And it's amazing when you sit down and talk to researchers about this and say, what questions would you ask? What research would you do if you had two orders of magnitude difference of speed of data throughput? And so again, this is just a great example of San Diego and Irvine leading the way, uh, and the rest of the campus is joining in and doing something that's now being talked about as a national effort, something called now the, instead of the PRP, the NRP, or National Research Platform, where we're hosting uh, universities. Uh, we, did a, um, we did a workshop up at Montana State this summer, really talking about how do we take this concept born out of the University of California and take it national. Uh, we continue to demonstrate great leadership in the uh, topic of data. How do we use data more strategically as an enterprise? And I'll just point to a couple of examples of UCSF and their clinical data uh, colloquium that they did. This is the second annual. San Diego did a data day and then their second annual health hack where they give uh, people access to the data over the weekend to, to drive more and more innovations. Uh, if you think about um, the uh, efforts around student data at UC San Diego uh, and their activity hub. So again, I think uh, these are great examples of how we are using our position in understanding technology and data and really driving the data-driven innovation across the enterprise. And 
you see oats. No, this is not a new breakfast cereal being created up at the Davis lab. This is actually a collaboration amongst um, our IT communities where an innovation coming out of UCLA around conflict of commitment for faculty is an application that's being invested into and expanded and to be signed on by eight campuses. So just another great example of one campus takes the lead, we recognize the innovation, other campuses say, hey, that'll work for us and how do we join in? Saving money for everyone and providing actually a much better tool out to support our faculty than what we have at most of our campuses today. So uh, these are just a couple of the, the examples of uh, the amazing things that we're doing, that you're doing, and that we wanted to share uh, before we got to our speakers today. Uh, I think it all speaks to the tremendous amount of innovation we have on and going in our community, and our first speaker today is one at the forefront of that innovation. Um, I want to introduce uh, to the audience, uh, um, Richard, go ahead and switch back over to, to me for a second. So I want to introduce the, uh, Gabe Yahtzee. Uh, Gabe has been a part of our community for a long time. Um, he, when I first got here to the university, he was working up at, at UC Davis, and we had the opportunity to position him uh, strategically over in the Agriculture and Natural Resources Unit of the university, where he has served as the Chief Information Officer, but now also more, even more strategically as the Chief Innovation Officer and is bringing technology to the forefront for how we think about um, using data and really generating innovation in the food and ag industries. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Gabe. Reminder to everyone that if you have questions for our speakers, uh, you can use Zoom chat as well as Slack to submit questions and we will read them out to our speakers here. So turning it over to Gabe. Great, <clears throat> thank you, Tom. Um, I am uh, I'm delighted to be here, and I, I'm going to uh, take you on a little bit of a uh, quick whirlwind tour into uh, a, a part of the University of California that you may not know much about, but I think you're going to be excited about, and that's the University of California and our work feeding the world through innovation. So first, uh, real quick, UC Agriculture and Natural Resources makes up three different things, Cooperative Extension, which is every single county in California except Alpine where we have a, a partnered office with the counties. It's the Ag Experiment Station at UC Berkeley, UC Davis, UC Riverside. Also now UC Merced, UC Santa Cruz, UC Santa Barbara, and coming soon to a UC near you. Um, our research and extension centers, where we have many field innovation hubs around California, from the very tip of the Oregon border down to Mexico, where we do uh, pressing research uh, in food, agriculture, natural resources, right in the heart uh, of the places where it grows. Uh, in California. We have run a number of different uh, institutes and programs, um, most, most notably uh, 4-H uh, is probably something most of you have heard of. One of our most uh, popular programs is UC uh, Integrated Pest Management, which uh, farmers and industry across the world rely upon, rely upon uh, daily. So I'm going to first of all answer what is a Chief Innovation Officer? I get asked that question a lot. I'm going to give you kind of uh, some, some quick hits, uh, cross-industry, region, institution, so it's all about partnerships, problem solving, uh, working with governments, fundraising and development, um, really uh, collaborative matrix teams, events, real estate, technology had to be in there somewhere, marketing, communications, and social media. So it's a, it's a role that mixes a lot of other roles together uh, to move the needle on critical partnerships. I would say is the, the short summary. Uh, but here, I'm, I'm, I'm here to talk to you about food and agriculture. Some of you have probably seen some variation on this statistic. Uh, the world in 2030 is gonna have about 8 billion people. We're gonna have a temperature increase. Um, energy uh, consumption will be higher. Water demand will be higher. California's at the forefront of that. Um, wilderness will be reduced. Competition for land increase, and most notably in my world, food demand is projected to increase by over 40%. That's huge. Um, but let's jump back to California real quick. If you look at California compared with the rest of the world, we are a Mediterranean climate. Um, look, at the, look at Europe and the other Mediterranean climates, Australia, Chile, uh, South Africa, North Africa. Uh, that's really the, the same uh, region that California is. Now, just as uh, by way of comparison, um, 
from the top ag producing uh, state in the nation to the second top ag exporter in the world, the Netherlands, one-tenth the size of California. Um, so pretty amazing uh, if you compare what Netherlands is able to do uh, compared with California. So let's jump, I'm gonna come back to the Netherlands in a minute. Let's jump to California real quick. California produces $46 billion in raw agricultural product. That's the highest in the nation. It's more than Iowa, Nebraska, Texas, Minnesota. So we're, we are absolutely the highest in the nation. You can see, I'll get into the, some of the things that we produce uh, and what we export. If you look at uh, our spending, every dollar that goes to agriculture is about 16 cents. The rest of it is value added food processing, packaging, transportation, retail, energy, all these other things. So huge multiplier effect on California, on the United States and the world that is California agriculture. Uh, my, my boss, our vice president, Glenda Humiston, likes to uh, refers to it as working landscapes we're talking more uh, also about agriculture, forests, fisheries, mining, all these things. 1.2 million jobs, $318 billion, 272,000 new jobs in five years. So uh, just, a, just a quick little tour about some of the uh, California ag statistics. We're the top dairy state. No, Wisconsin is not it. California is. So uh, milk, cream, and uh, every variation. Is a, is a huge production in California. You can see in the Central Valley, um, probably no surprise to you if you've ever driven through Coalinga, uh, Harris Ranch. Nuts, uh, almonds, 81% of the global supply of almonds are produced in California. The same goes for walnuts and pistachios in slightly different variations, and they're shipped all over the world. Lettuce, 73% of lettuce is grown in California in the Salinas Valley and then down south, far south in the Imperial Valley. Strawberries, most of the strawberries in the United States are grown in California. So uh, I'm just giving you a quick tour, but you can see fruits, vegetables, and nuts. There's no other place like California in the world in terms of its um, abundant um, agricultural production and the things that we produce for not only California, the United States, and the world, and the demand is only increasing. Citrus, um, believe it or not, Florida is not, uh, not the state for oranges. It's the state for orange juice. When you eat a fresh orange, you eat it from California most typically. Um, so 38% come from California. Here's a good news story uh, from, from the University of California. Uh, citrus production, uh, you can see from this kind of uh, timeline, began in the early 1900s. And uh, UC started research back then at UC Riverside. And since then, agriculture production has increased. The UC has played an integral role from uh, helping introduce the, tan, the tango mandarin, otherwise known as a uh, cutie. Um, so uh, huge popular uh, uh, peelable fruit. Um, but there's some nasty bugs. Asian citrus and the one lung bing virus are threatening worldwide citrus populations. UC has played a critical role in all of that. I wish I could end there, but California has major threats uh, to its agricultural system. Labor, um, compliance challenges, water, environmental sustainability, safe, food safety is paramount, and what consumers choose to eat is changing. This uh, picture of uh, picking strawberries looks identical almost to exactly the same way, exactly the way it would happen over 100 years ago. Innovation here is needed. Look at some of the other agricultural crops. Uh, asparagus is virtually gone in California, 67% drop. Uh, stone fruit, that's peaches, apricots, uh, nectarines, things like that, just dropping like crazy because it's very labor intensive to, to grow and pick these crops. Um, on, the, up on the same token, tree nuts are increasing uh, because they're, they're fairly mechanized. Uh, and water is always a paramount concern. So we have tree nuts increasing, which is a very thirsty crop. We have California being pretty much a desert and most of the water being in the northern part of the state, having to get to the southern part of the state, something's got to give. Um, at the same time that all this is going on, agricultural technology is advancing globally. Um, you can see uh, very real and frantic efforts to pick, have a robotic harvester for strawberries. Um, up there on the upper left. On the right, um, robotic weeding has become mainstream. 
which is a uh, hu huge labor, labor savings, pest savings, nitrogen savings. Um, indoor agriculture, um, places like the Nether Netherlands are at the forefront of growing fruit, fruits, vegetables indoors. And drones, um, this, is, uh, this one is uh, sp spraying some kind of pesticide or, or nitrogen, but you can produce it in a lot more finer applications and doses. So what we're at the forefront here is if California really should be and is poised to be a natural leader in uh, food and ag technologies. And those are things like Internet IoT for the farm. I can use those, those uh, shortened acronyms for this crowd. Big data, machine learning, artificial intelligence are all playing, playing out in our food system. But also biotech, biotech uh, genomics, CRISPR-Cas9, those are all gonna play a role in how we roll out um, this systematized technology across our farm and food system. Robotics and mechatronics, um, connectivity. If we don't have connectivity to these devices, it's not going to work correctly. And the list goes on. So we need to bring together in a new ecosystem, ag and food environmental sciences, computer sciences and engineering, with structures for innovation and a way to commercialize and incubate those things. And there's precedent for those. If you look at some of those acronyms that uh, many of you are probably a part of or know about that are on your campuses. So uh, we, UC a and uh, pictured there on the left, partnered with a Sacramento re Regional um, Accelerator Incubator called AgStart um, to launch the Vine. And the Vine, like a grapevine, is meant to connect clusters of innovation resources, making it easier for innovators and entrepreneurs to identify and access the resources that they need. So what are some of those things? Um, so mentorship and connections, co-working spaces, maker spaces, wet labs, greenhouses, growth. all of these things are things either on your campuses or things uh, on, on other places around California that entrepreneurs in this sector desperately need access to. So the Vine is a community. It's a statewide community. It's not just the UC. It's the, it's the California Community College System. It's the California State System. It's private uh, sector incubators and uh, innovation resources. And it's the federal government entities like NASA. It's a, it's a huge network across California of innovators working together for the future of our food and food system. Some of the resources, uh, I've already talked about those. So what are some of the things that we're doing? We're, uh, we're creating and partnering for events. We've, we run hackathons. We did an Apps for Ag hackathon for several years. We've done summer camps for high school kids. Um, we've partnered for ama amazing events like the Forb Ag Tech Summit in Salinas to the Mixing Bowl Hub event at UC San Francisco in San Francisco. Um, one of the ones I'm really excited about that I'm going to say more about is our Vine Meetup series where we're creating very lightweight meetups around the state and we want to invite many of you to participate in those as well. Some of the focus areas that, that we are, we're focused on, sorry if that writing is a little bit small, um, digital agriculture, new crops, robotics, indoor agriculture, and data, very, very similar to the theme, theme that Tom mentioned around data. So this is an old uh, map, but this is just some of the startups that are coming fast and furious in agriculture that um, we are all uh, working hard to figure out how do they fit into the overall ecosystem. One of the ways that we're going to help through the vine is to create digital agriculture testing labs to test and evaluate that technology in real time, making sure it's integrated, it's connected, it works well together, and we can demonstrate it at field locations across California. The first test, uh, we, the first thing we did was we connected up some of our rural uh, sites with our partner Scenic, um, and from there, we're now gonna connect up sensors from moisture sensors, temperature, humidity, and even groundbreaking nitrogen sensors, which will actually monitor the amount of nitrogen in the soil. If that works, that will be huge, but we have to test it. Just some of, an example of some of the projects that are happening uh, at the University of California with a variety of partners. This is the Terra Project, commissioned by ARPA-IA, federal government uh, agency that's looking at um, bioenergy production. But it's pulling to get the things that it's pulling together cloud computing with data analytics, robotics, phenomics, which is the, the study of 
the uh, attri physical attributes uh, of plants in this case, and then genomics, pulling that all together and making sense of it. Uh, that, those are some, very, some of the, the projects we're working on. In addition to all the IT stuff, we're also working on new crops. And there's some real opportunity in California to, uh, to bring some new crops to the market that really don't exist in California yet, but there's huge interest in growing them and testing whether we can actually create a market right here in California. Industrial hemp is, is one of the key ones uh, that's coming, coming down the pike. But data and services to uh, accelerate adoption are really key. And so um, both uh, creating new uh, capabilities like a data hub there on the lower right, but they're tied in with emerging standards. Ag Gateway is one of those standards. Uh, it, it's really going to be critical for the interoperability of all these data, technology systems, et cetera. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about crop manage, one of the very specific applications that the UC has developed that we're working on commercializing to support the industry. And then education, various, uh, there's, there's uh, a lot of clamoring for agricultural technology education and, and the buying is actually working on that too. Let me just say a little bit about crop manage. What crop manage does is it reduces the amount of water and fertilizer that you need to apply to your crop by 20 to 40%, which is huge. Uh, it takes a bunch of data in, soil data uh, from uh, UC Davis, CIMIS data from the state of California, uh, a, a nitrogen test and some other sensors. It uh, crunches those and gives you a specific re recommendation about how much to water and fertilize. Um, if, we can, if we can make it simple to use and put it in the hands of farmers and farm workers, game changer for the industry. Um, robotics. So anything from uh, weeders up there on the left to uh, harvesting machines and drones, uh, we're working on various approaches to support the development and acceleration of robotics to support to uh, solve real major challenges. Let me give you one example. Um, there's a company called Blue River, started by a couple of Stanford guys in 2011, and uh, they kind of uh, came out to the California Central Valley, including one of our UC sites there. They won a small NSF grant, proved out their technology, and then were awarded uh, raised capital three million dollars. Went for another round, raised another 10 million, raised another 17 million, and proved out their technology, which is high microdoses of um, pesticides that would prevent blanketing of pesticides, but produce a targeted micro shot uh, based on a, on a vision system to kill a weed. So you can use a, actually a nastier pesticide, but a tiny, tiny fraction of what you'd actually normally apply. This company was so successful in building and proving out their technology, they were sold to John Deere this past year for $305 million um, because these companies are looking for their path to innovation as well. Indoor agriculture also presents another opportunity to think about how do we grow food indoors, whether those are greenhouses or under lights like this. And this is happening right now at UC Riverside, um, UC Davis, and uh, many other places in between. Ultimately, we'd love to see these uh, end up to be more places where we can co-create under one roof, where startups can get commercialized, where students can, can get educated, where corporations can actually do their innovation, where we can, of course, do academic research, but also that field trial and demonstration, which is so critical to adoption in this industry. I already showed you that slide. So I'm going to end with this. I uh, would love for you to engage with the Vine. First of all, go to our website, thevine.io. Uh, there's a way you can sign up and you'll get uh, newsletters and updates from us. Please follow us on Twitter, vine underscore io. And I mentioned our Vine meetups. We're going to start uh, having those at different places all over California, and we will be connecting in with UCIT to invite you to participate because those are really meant for community building around food and ag technology. So we need technologists there just as much as we need farmers. And if you have ideas on partnering with us uh, on the Vine, we're partnering all over the world, including the Netherlands and South America. Uh, we'd love for, for any of you on your campuses to partner with us as well. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll finish up. And then I think there's a couple of questions. 
What about urban agriculture and UC? Urban agriculture and UC. So um, urban agriculture is uh, takes on a variety of different forms. Um, UC A and R, and that would be Davis, Riverside, Irvine, uh, many other locations are heavily involved in urban agriculture. Whether that means indoor farming, um, which is one form of urban agriculture, all the way down to uh, various ways to reduce landscape water use. Um, all of those uh, technologies and practices are being considered, and uh, the vine uh, cares just as much as uh, at, at scale field agriculture as it does uh, indoor and urban agriculture, and that's why I mentioned it. So, uh, absolutely. So, another comment implementing security with IoT is a must, which should be matched with the need of innovation in ANR. It's a, it's a great point. And um, we, we, I think we're still early days on a lot of the IoT for farm and food, and that's just as much a concern as it is to any other sector, um, because uh, danger and risk to our food supply is a very um, important issue. And so uh, cybersecurity practice at a and uh, and beyond is, is uh, absolutely uh, critical. Um, so we're absolutely taking it seriously. All right. With that, I'm I'm ending. Uh, just oh, there's one more question. Just okay. Sorry All right. That. Sure. What are the impacts of the recent federal administration's tariffs on our state and our ag providers? Um, they are a mixture. Um, they're they're mostly negative um, because uh, it does uh, inhibit the ability um, of us, you know, like uh, fruits and nuts, uh, both anything that we export. To, to Asia now have uh, extra taxes added, so demand is falling. So I'd say generally it's negative, um, but there, there are instances where it hasn't had much of an effect, particularly where we sell most of our product domestically um, and to non-Asian countries. But the things like uh, tree nuts has, uh, and uh, citrus, it's had quite a big impact. Okay, another question came in. Since UC is a major research entity in the health industry, is there any initiative to study the effects of GMO and pesticide resistant products with our ag department? Yes, so um, UC is both a creator of genetically modified organisms and unashamedly so, um, as well as studying the effects of those um, and the, the health impacts of both genetically modified organisms, but also environmental impacts of pesticides and in fact, California is the strictest um, uh, regulatory environment in the nation. So actually the amount of pesticides for use in California is actually very limited. One of the reasons why robotic weeding is so interesting to our weed scientists because uh, the limitations and the risk factors with chemical use are not there. I should also add there's a lot of interest in microbial um, uh, approaches which are taking natural environmental processes and using that in place of chemicals to summarize. Um, one final question. What is the biggest risk having such a concentrated agricultural model in the USA? Um, well, the biggest risk is sustainability. So um, I think we all feel it in California. Um, we have diversified into things, we've had natural diversification into places like Mexico, um, but we do feel it, and there is a risk there. And uh, so part of the, re the impetus of this innovation effort is to address some of those challenges uh, and create partnerships with other ag producing regions like I showed you in other parts of the world uh, that are very complementary to California. I'd say the indoor agriculture approach is also another forward future looking approach to address that topic as well. With that, I think I'm out of time. I'm going to uh, turn it back to Tom. All right, Gabe, thank you. Uh, you know, uh, I think you can see why we uh, had uh, Gabe come present to us today. Uh, in so many ways, in so many different industries, the university is making a big difference. The technology disruption in food and agriculture is, is very dramatic. I mean, it was one of the reasons why we took the opportunity to, to place them over there because you heard information about connectivity, 
cloud, Internet of Things, security, AI, machine learning. I mean, there's just so much impact going on where technology is playing a role in yet another industry, just like in education and healthcare and manufacturing, et cetera. So it was a great, uh, a, a great opportunity to share another part of the university in a place where, where our efforts are making a difference. Uh, what I'd like to do now is turn to our next speaker, uh, Tom Trappler, who's part of the UCIT uh, uh, procurement community, uh, based out in UCLA, but uh, you know he supports the entire system. And 18 months ago, our IT sourcing committee under the ITLC uh, put a bold idea on the table for us to come together in a way that we hadn't really ever before and really look at doing uh, a RFP for infrastructure-related products. Uh, that all of us participated in the RFP and in the scoring and in the selection so that we could have uh, products and services available for all of us under a single set of terms and conditions and contracts and agreed pricing. And it has been an amazing journey for us and a learning for how to work together in this concept we sometimes call systemness. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, Tom's going to talk a little bit about, you know, the end of that road, which led to having a set of agreements in place and what now you uh, at your campuses and medical centers have uh, available to you, uh, not just in the central IT unit, but across the system. Uh, and I want to kind of say before I turn it over to Tom that, you know, why is this important? Uh, well, you know, every dollar that we're able to save is a dollar that we can reallocate back over to help a student, to help a patient. To help a faculty member. And we need to do our part on, under our True North strategic plan, the concept of financial sustainability university. Part of that is for us to find ways to use our size and scale to save money so that we can focus it on mission critical activities, much like you just heard Gabe talk about. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tom Trappler, and he's going to talk about our UC-wide IT infrastructure agreements. Tom, over to you. Great. Thank you, Tom. Um, and good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Just want to make sure slides are looking okay on your end. Yep. Great. Um, so just uh, want to make sure to give, give credit where credit is due. Um, Michael Wegman on my team has actually been our point guy on this and, and deserves a lot of the credit for leading this to closure. Um, but he had a conflict this morning, so I'm, I'm just standing in for him today. I just want to give a little background um, on uh, you know, before the project started, um, our data analysis right showed uh, prior aggregate UC-wide spend at around $81 million, right? So a big opportunity there. Uh, another driver at that point in time was that we had legacy agreements with both Cisco, uh, HP, and Dell that were expiring in 2018. And so we needed to figure out what to do there as well. Um, so the uh, the, as Tom mentioned, new at the time UC-wide IT sourcing committee uh, identified IT infrastructure as a priority project for our team to dedicate resources to. And so we, um, we partnered with them at, as well as a broad cross-section of uh, subject matter experts and stakeholders um, in, in the IT community. The RFP uh, actually had 23 different team members uh, got a, a grid with, with all their uh, names and, and locations at the end. Um, we took the approach of divvying up IT infrastructure into five categories, routers and switches, uh, servers, storage, wireless, and firewall, and accepted bids in each of those five categories. Um, in response to that RFP, uh, we got 105 individual responses uh, from 29 different suppliers representing um, 19 unique OEMs. Uh, so you know, this was a, a, a very large, possibly the largest uh, RFP that we've done um, and, and a lot of responses to uh, sort through. Our goal was to identify the top two to four OEMs per category in terms of highest quality, right? The RFP was not just about price, first came quality. Right? Uh, and then once we identified the highest quality um, suppliers, and then we negotiated with them uh, to, to obtain both the lowest pricing as well as appropriate terms and conditions uh, based upon UC's needs. So just a quick bit of background there. Uh, so, um, you know, that all sounds very simple and I packed it in one slide, but there was many months of hard work by a lot of people. Uh, and the results 
um, which I know is the kind of key element today, right, uh, are kind of summarized in this table here. And uh, I've, I've alphabetized it by OEM. Uh, the majority of our agreements are selling through VARs, resellers, right? And then in the third column, indicating which products were included. And then in the fourth column, um, were professional services included or not? So uh, just going down the list, uh, Cisco, which, which is our highest spend in this uh, space, um, we now have a new UC-wide agreement with E plus as the VAR. Um, all Cisco products are included uh, and professional services are also included. Um, in this table, um, because of some of the terms of our agreements, I can't publicly display some of the discounts, but I'm gonna give you some information on how to find that, those details uh, in a couple of slides before we leave. Um, next agreement uh, was with Dell, um, and that was uh, actually a combination of two projects. We had a parallel project for end user devices happening at the same time, and Dell was selected um, as an awardee there, as well as with servers and storage. Um, so we actually wound up doing just one large agreement with Dell covering that whole range of products. Um, and in fact, that was uh, something that they had never done before. So um, it, it was uh, a lot of work there, but uh, a great end result as well. Um, interestingly enough, um, Dell also bid as a VAR, as a reseller for Fortinet products um, in the firewall space. And Fortinet was one of our two uh, two OEMs meeting the minimum quality points in, in the firewall space. So our Dell agreement not only includes the Dell end user device server and storage products, but also Fortinet um, firewall products. Um, with HPE, server, storage, and wireless being HPE's Aruba uh, division, um, our VAR there is Dasher, and we also have really great pricing there. Um, the next two, um, with Lenovo and NetApp, um, we actually, um, so Lenovo uh, finished in terms of uh, one of the top quality in terms of servers, and NetApp finished in top quality in terms of storage. As part of the, our analysis and research, we identified existing agreements um, with Lenovo through a GPO organization called the National Association of State Procurement Officers. And actually that existing agreement had the best pricing and terms out there. And with NetApp, it was actually a state of California agreement that had the best uh, pricing out there. Um, so we actually went ahead and uh, basically just put forth recommended guidelines and process to take advantage of those agreements um, beyond UC and leveraging right scope and scale beyond UC. Um, next comes Palo Alto Networks, also in the category of firewall. Uh, and the, the VAR for Palo Alto is Worldwide Technologies. Um, and in the case of also peer storage, which was one of the top quality points in the storage category, um, Worldwide Technology also had the best terms and pricing. So Worldwide um, is our VAR for both Palo Alto networks and peer storage. Um, if you look in the column on the right for professional services, uh, you'll see the two gaps are the Lenovo and the NetApp. Um, and that's just because we're, since we're leveraging external agreements, um, th those agreements weren't contemplated with professional services. So we went ahead um, just for the equipment and the products. Um, and then with Dell, um, there's no professional services there. Um, uh, essentially, we, we, uh, they, they wouldn't agree to UC's security provisions, uh, which, which um, are kind of a foundational for us to be able to uh, adopt them for professional services. So that's a high level overview of the results. Um, and so what does it all mean, right? Um, and what it means is sort of, uh, I'd like to summarize as uh, fast, cheap, and easy, right? <laughs> um, so uh, these agreements are now all in place, UC-wide. Uh, UC getting excellent pricing. Um, because these RFPs were not done with a committed volume, uh, they are excellent pricing for volume one. But if your location was say, for example, I'm going to buy a thousand of any of these given products, um, probably uh, best to uh, position that with, with any of these suppliers uh, and try to do even better on the existing discounts, right? Um, so, so just like in any case, right? The more volume you have, right? The more leverage you have. Um, there's less risk. The terms and conditions are aligned with UC's needs. 
um, including uh, UC's Appendix DS, that's our data security language for our contracts, as well as our uh, Appendix for Business Associate Agreement for those in the, the health environment, um, so that they're appropriate for use with PHI. Um, speed, right? These agreements are now in place. Anyone at UC who needs to buy any of these products doesn't have to go out and do a separate RFP or any other separate process, right? There's no further competitive bidding required. Uh, you just choose the product you need, reference the agreement, buy it, install it, and go forth and use it. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, one of our goals was to identify at least two uh, OEM suppliers in each of the five categories. So there are, as you noticed, at least two, uh, in some cases four in each category. So there's choice, right? Um, some campuses are standardized, perhaps on one product, some are on another product or OEM product. Um, now we have choice uh, that each location can select the best product that works for their environment. Um, so basically, so what does it all mean? Um, if, if we took that 81 million that I mentioned at the beginning and we had all these agreements in place and had bought under those agreements, UC as a system would have saved $16 million per year, right? Um, so uh, we do feel really confident in the results of these agreements and uh, very much want to encourage everyone to look at them and leverage them to the maximum extent possible. Um, so I mentioned earlier uh, some details due to the uh, terms of the agreements uh, that I can't share in a public forum. Um, so how do I how do I learn more about this agreement? Uh, these agreements, right? Um, the first would be uh, visit the UC. Uh, IT strategic sourcing website. Uh, we have links there that will um, both give you deeper dive information, um, contacts at your location uh, who can also help walk you through this, um, as well as um, if you want to, uh, if you want to get copies of the agreements themselves, which is where you know the details and the discounts, etc., reside. Um, there's a link on our website to Cal Usource, which is the new UC wide contract management system. Um, and you can go into CalUSource and uh, basically get access to each of these agreements. Every UC employee can get access to that um, and see the exact discounts, the exact products, et cetera. So you can understand as you're uh, making your purchase decisions, uh, the exact discounts and pricing. Um, the uh, CalUSource is on track to be turned on and accessible for all UC employees. Um, but that's still uh, a few weeks away, I'm told. So uh, there is a, another link on our website. If you don't currently have access, you can put in a specific request for access in the meantime. Um, who do I contact for more information? Um, as I mentioned, kudos goes to Michael Wegman on my team. Uh, and so I have his email address there as well. Um, if you want to reach out, he, he knows the, the granular details better than anyone else out there. Um, and just want to pause for questions and just leave this slide up because again, uh, this was a UC-wide effort, hard work of a lot of very dedicated and smart folks and I just want them to get the screen time uh, while we're answering any questions. So I'll pause so, for Tom, we have, we have a few questions via chat. There's one, uh, is this for on-prem infrastructure only? Uh, this is uh, for equipment uh, and professional services. So uh, if you're thinking, is it for cloud services? Uh, that was not the focus of, of this RFP. Are pure professional services, such as help adopting DevOps, included in this system, or is it more focused at product plus associated work? Um, I'm gonna say that we have a wide range of professional services. I believe we kind of grouped it in five categories for pure, pure storage, I think was the question. Um, uh, there is development. I don't pretend to be uh, knowledgeable enough to know exactly the technology question behind that, uh, but I'm sure Michael could connect you up uh, with the specific details. Are there negotiated cloud services in the pipeline? Um, cloud services, uh, and if you're um, thinking in terms of infrastructure as a service, there are existing UC-wide agreements with Amazon Web Services as well as Microsoft Azure. Um, uh, there's a work in progress with Google Cloud Platform. So in the infrastructure as a service category, we will have agreements with the top three very shortly. 
um, software as a service, for example. Um, frankly, the, the, those products and services are all over the map. Um, we have a variety of them in place now. We have a variety of projects in place um, for uh, online grading, online surveys, um, online library management systems, et cetera. So uh, there is a growing range of software as a service choices as well. Who do they contact if they're interested in pursuing a system-wide agreement for other IT services? Uh, so if you have an idea for a new UC-wide uh, IT strategic sourcing project, um, I would go ahead and Google UCITSC, and uh, that's how I usually get as quickly as possible to the UC IT Strategic Sourcing Committee's website. When you get to that website, uh, there's a menu bar at the top, and one of the choices is uh, something like project intake form, uh, and that's open to all UC folks, right, to, to submit and suggest ideas for new UC-wide IT strategic sourcing projects. Um, my suggestion would be, when you, before you submit, to kind of line up your ducks and have as many of your colleagues at different locations as possible, kind of on board and backing that idea. Uh, so when it gets to the IT, uh, IT sourcing committee, you know, they're aware of the, the value and, and demand at each location, right? And so then can appropriately prioritize that project so idea. I think that's all the questions. Okay, uh, great. Well, thank you everyone. Tom, Tom, great. That was fantastic. Thank you. You're on. You're on. Okay, great. So, um, you know, as I said before Tom's presentation, this is really important stuff. It may seem like a little thing, but this is a big accomplishment for us to be able to uh, come together in the way we did, uh, develop a set of muscles that I think are, are underdeveloped here at the University of California, which is that we, when we do have common interests, how do we come together and participate in a, in a process together and get something that will benefit all of us. And, and this is a great example of flexing those muscles, but we're not done. And I think what we've learned some things along this journey uh, and we need your help. Everyone who's on this call, everyone to our community, we need your help. Uh, and, and that is in getting this message out to all parts of our IT community. Much in the same way over the last you know, three years, we've expanded you know, not just talking about central IT, but about the academic IT unit, the people in the research setting, the librarians. The reality is, and I firmly believe that that total spend of $81 million is underrepresented of the amount that we truly buy of these types of products and services when you look at our entire community. But we can only get benefit is if we let those parts know that these contracts are there for them as well. And so what I'm asking of everyone is to share the news that these contracts are in place to every corner of the university because every corner should be able to benefit from the hard work that, that uh, Tom, Michael, and, and the teams that took us through the RFP process um, uh, have generated for us. It is a benefit for all of us. I know that when I go out and you know, I mentioned these, I was with uh, UCSF's um, IT Governance Committee last week, I mentioned it there. Please mention it to your colleagues, point them to the websites, help them connect easily to get informed about what's there for them, and then we're working on making it as simple, easy, and frictionless for them to go from learning to actually placing the order for what they want to buy. All right. um, we're going to put a number out there. We're going to put a number of $50 million saved. You know, Tom put a number up there that if we all had bought last year at $16 million, we're going to put a $50 million up there. And I'm not saying we're going to achieve that in a year, uh, but it is if we get the news out, we should be able to see that number start to rise over time. And let's see how quickly we can get to $50 million as a system. I think it's a great goal for us just to, again, let's push ourselves a little bit here. So, uh, Richard, let's go back over to the slides real quick. So uh, just a few updates from the ITLC uh, and some other things in the broader uh, IT community. Um, one, we talked a little bit about UCCSC at Davis this summer. Uh, let's, I should be able to I go forward here. Yeah. Right, okay. So we talked a little bit about UCCSC and Davis this summer. Uh, the um, team at Santa Barbara is coming together and planning for next summer. We're, uh, should be a great venue down at Santa Barbara, all very close to the beach. We should enjoy that. 
Uh, you know, the concept of one of the things at UCCSC uh, and, and um, you know, our, our colleague down at UC San Diego, Vince Keller, the CIO there, talked about this concept on his campus of better together, you know, in terms of the way that, you know, across all of the UCSD uh, silos, they've come together and they're better together as an IT community. And I think that that same concept expands to all of us across the UC system. So the concept of better together was absolutely well represented at UCCSD this summer. Uh, we have, uh, thanks to our, our, our friends at Davis, they started calling together um, a, a photo gallery of pictures from the, uh, you know, from the event. A couple uh, years past have done this as well. Santa Cruz did this when they had it two years ago. Uh, and uh, San Diego last year had it. Uh, but we're going to do a call. Yvonne and I want to do a call out to the community. Like, if you've got a good picture, Okay, because we know everyone takes lots of pictures, but we want you know, kind of a good picture they think that's representative of our, of our community. Send it up to either myself or Yvonne here, Office of Presidents. We're going to get into the gallery because one of the things that, um, that, that Davis talked about is type, trying to memorialize these events. Uh, as we build this community, it's fun to see how it develops, how we express ourselves. One of the great things about UCCSC uh, and when this coming year to be called UC Tech. Uh, is that each campus who hosts gets to express their own personality and the way they put on the event. And I think that's one of the things that makes it very unique. And, and when I talk about these with colleagues around the country, uh, they're, they're very envious of. Uh, though they think that every one of our campuses is on the beach. I don't know why they would think that. They, maybe they need a geography lesson, Gabe, um, that uh, even, even us in, uh, in California, we, we have our you know, places where it just is farmland as long as we can stay. We got to educate them out there in Iowa and, and Indiana. Anyhow, so we were at Educog. Many of us were at Educog last week. Uh, for those of you there, I think I saw many of you because we hosted a dinner for anyone from the uh, UC community who was out there. Uh, just a fantastic event. Uh, our community was well represented, not just in attendance, but in the many workshops and presentations that you all made. Uh, it was uh, great to hear some of the buzz going around and. The dinner that we had, we also did with our colleagues over at the CSU. So we took over the Hard Rock Cafe and had a great time. I uh, had a chance to meet not just people from our community, but saw some mingling going on. And, you know, again, when it's talk about you know, the benefits of higher education and the mission, uh, we have a lot in common with them. And thank you for everyone who came to dinner and for the, uh, the interactions that you had. Uh, the ITLC is coming together next week uh, for our, you know, we talk every month, but next week is a face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, being chaired by our fearless leader, Matt Hall, down at uh, Santa Barbara, who couldn't be with us today. But, uh, you know, we're going to be talking a lot about how we continue this road uh, around working together, better together. Uh, some new models for uh, how the CIOs collaborate, uh, led by uh, a few of our CIOs at the campus level. Uh, we've had more engagement from actually the health systems in the ITLC. Uh, which has been great to get their voices more represented. Uh, we're going to be doing some some updates on um, different types of some things going on at Scenic, since that's something we all share using Scenic as a as a backbone. Uh, and uh, we're going to be talking about uh, cloud. You know, quite quite a bit of time dedicated to cloud and our relationship with uh, AWS, just as an example for. And I know a question came up as part of the procurement conversation. How are we dealing with cloud services? Is there a way that we can get those contracts to benefit us? And we do have some of those contracts in place, as Tom mentioned, with AWS and Azure uh, and working on, on the Google. But we probably need to do uh, some work there in terms of educating our community as well about how do I access those contracts, get informed, so that I can get the best possible arrangement for my campus or my health system when, when uh, we need it. So uh, with that, I want to thank our speakers for today. And the last thing that we do is just really leave it open for the last five minutes for general Q&A. Again, you can send them via Slack or uh, Zoom chat if you have any just more generic questions for the group on any topic. I'll give people 30 seconds to think of something that they have. Nothing coming in? No. Okay. All right. 
Well, no questions from the group. Um, again, thank you again. To, oh, wait, something coming in. Yes. What is the next town hall? Uh, do we have a date for it? We haven't set for it yet, but it's probably going to be in the February time frame, most likely. And um, if you have suggestions or, or things that you'd like to hear about, please send them our way. We're, we're always looking for good ideas and speakers to join to uh, share uh, all the wonderful things, amazing things that our community is doing across the system. We're good? Okay. Well, with that, I'll close. I want to say again, uh, thank you to Tom Trappler, Dave Bianchi for your presentation today. Thank you for everything you do out there to make this university the absolute best on the planet. And let's keep doing good things. Thanks, everyone.